So there's an obvious reason why I paired these two questions together because yeah. they're both very, very similar. And it's the same thing. And, it, and if we don't, if a member of your team won't come forward and admit that they have an issue, then the issue is not going to get addressed. And this is the same exact thing that you have to explain to your team. Like, hey, if you start going down because you're dehydrated or you start getting, de- uh, getting frostbite and you need to get warmed up, you need to say something. If you don't say something, that's going to hurt the whole team. That's what's bad. So, so I think that's important. I think that's important to make sure everyone understands that this part of being a good operator is knowing your limitations and when you reach your limitations raising your hand and saying hey this is a problem and believe me there's there's guys that might complain about little things and they're eventually going to be labeled as a little complainer right and they don't really have issues so there's a fine line right there's a fine line but for this one you know for someone that's having some kind of mental stress well again we got to recognize what's going on we got to recognize that it's impacting us negatively at work so that means you got to raise your hand if it's having a negative impact on the way you're performing then you got to raise your hand and I think it's important to explain to people that this is something that something that happens to can happen every anybody and it's not a negative thing it's just a reality it's it's kind of like it reminds me of being afraid, right? And if 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 you're let's say you got a new guy that's never done anything before and he doesn't know that he's going to be afraid <laughs> going on an operation, then he's going to wonder why his stomach is upset <laughs> or why he's second guessing himself or why he can't sleep like, "Oh, you can't sleep." Guess what? That's normal. You're going on a, a hardcore combat operation tomorrow. The fact that you can't sleep is completely normal. The fact that you feel sick to your stomach is completely normal. The fact that you're you're, you're shaking, th- those things are normal. Like you're gonna feel those, that's okay. It's not that big of a deal. And those things are, are just fear, that's what they are. And if you know what they are and you know that fear is okay and it's acceptable and it's actually kind of good, right? Because if, if, if you're not feeling any fear whatsoever, well, then, you know, you've got some, well, you should be feeling afraid. You should, you should feel fear. That should, that should propel you. It should get you on edge. Those, all those things are actually happening for a reason. So there's nothing wrong with that. And I think that's the same thing that you got to explain to people with stress. Like, oh, okay, that you can have too much fear. You keep someone at that heightened state for an extended period of time. Well, that's called combat stress and it's real. And it can happen. It can happen to anyone. And you know, how many books have we talked about on this podcast where you can see stress, combat stress taking its toll on people? And and when it does, you know, we've talked about it many times. Pete, if you, if you get to that point, you need a break. And, and Dick Winters from Band of Brothers, you know, he would give those guys breaks without them even knowing that he was giving them a break. He'd say, oh, hey, Echo, you got to go back and do a little logistics run for four days. Just make sure we have more supplies coming our way. Get you off the front line. Get you a breather. So that way, again, the same metaphor I've used before is if you have an engine in the red and you keep running it, what's going to happen to the engine? It's going to burn out. It's not going to be usable. If you have someone that's psychologically stressed and they're in the red and you keep running them in the red, guess what? Eventually, they're not going to be usable anymore. So you need to give them a break, get them off the line. Because if you do take an engine, if your engine light, check engine light comes on and you go and get it maintained, get it fixed, the engine's still good. If you keep running it, the engine will be destroyed. So you got to do that with your people and you got to make sure everybody knows. And I think that's a real simple metaphor to use with people as well. Say, look, we're running hard. And we're going to put some stress on the engine. And if you don't keep the engine maintained, the engine's going to break and you won't be any good to the team. You won't be any good for the mission. So if you start feeling your engine light go on, you got to let someone know so we can give you the proper maintenance. And that's it. Jody Middick talked about that too. Jody was, you know, saying, hey, you know, basically, if you get injured, if you break your ankle, they don't just expect you just to keep going. No, yeah. like, okay, you need to get back and you need to do rehab. Well, the same thing can happen to your brain. Mm-hmm. Your brain gets a break in it. You don't just keep driving or it's going to fracture and fall apart. Yeah. What do you do? You you take a break. You get downtime and you get recovered and then you'll be ready to rock and roll again. Yeah. So two really good questions to start it off. 
you know, again, especially for folks out there on the battlefield. And, and, and it's not just for people on the battlefield because it happens with any, any group of people that are in a stressful environment. I mean, obviously, cops g- get put into a really stressful environment all the time. Well, if you need to take a breather, you need to say something before you, before you burn out the engine. Yeah. Same thing with business world, right? People in the business world get extremely stressed out. Well, you probably need a break at some point. Yeah. Make sure you work that in there. I get a lot of questions. People asking me for help. So I ask them, what have you done to help yourself? Most of them say, I've been working hard. I'm all about being your own fucking hero. But I'm not about kissing your ass. In life, a lot of us believe that we're working much harder than we actually are. We think if we fucking got up early for four days, we've earned something. You gotta drop your entitled mindset. It's dead weight. We believe you work harder than we actually have. Trust me, most of us haven't. The one thing in life you gotta realize is this. Learn to help yourself. Don't count other people to help you. Stay hard. Think about how many Years, months, hours, seconds, days, all that shit. You have wasted on people who suck the fucking life out of you. Today's a good day for you to go through and shit can those motherfuckers. Shit can those motherfuckers who only call you when they fucking need something. Shit can those motherfuckers who can't get over shit. Who continue to bring up shit from the past. We can't move forward. Life is short. Life is precious. Spend that time with the people you love. The people you want to get that time to. Real friends, real family. Everybody else, they're just sucking up the air you breathe. You need that motherfucker to be hard. Stay hard. To all you computer warriors, trolls, haters, I read your fucking messages on those videos I put up with me and my crutches, me getting my knees straight. You were happy I was fucking injured. You're also happy because you thought I'd never run again. All that C, I told you, tagging your friend shit. Bitch, you don't fucking know me. You see a one minute fucking video about me. You don't know how hard I train, how I live, the fucking dedication I put into my fucking life. So why do you troll? Maybe it's a fat motherfucker at home, lazy, with no discipline or dedication. Maybe you're jealous. Who knows? But guarantee this, I'll be back better than ever. Ha <laughs> ha, fuck you, stay hard.